wrong, Brian? Where are you headed? Out to do a tour. Yeah. Hey, these are our remote students. Oh, my. Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I should cover up here. <laughs> wow. What a pleasure. I don't get a chance to see the remote students. So this is great. Hey, bear with me, Margaret. I'm, I'm with one of my, our alumni. We're doing the virtual tour. And uh, so uh, Margaret is uh, in Oregon. And Margaret, I want you to say hi to everyone. Uh, these are our remote students. You're sideways, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that fixed in a moment here. Well, welcome all of you. And Jerome Bright is our Director of Alumni Relations. And so at some point, he'll be in four years, he'll be reaching out to you all and saying, join our book club or come be a part of coming back and seeing us. So anyway, or get some free game tickets for Hong Kong. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome again. We'll be in touch. Right. All right, Marguerite, I'm gonna see if I can adjust my screen somewhat yeah. here. <laughs> now you look normal. <laughs> it's supposed to work the other way. So I wanna see if I can adjust that. Okay. How is oh, that for you? There we go. Is that better? Okay, yeah. perfect. That's what we want. So like to the building, it has this nice circular area that's right here, it's great for sitting. A lot of people will come out, have lunch, read books itself on the ground where the school is at. I think you may know this already, but wasn't Henry Strauss one of your classmates? I don't remember that name on the... He might have been. Uh, okay. Jean, Jean Irwin was one of the former deans, was in my class. Oh, you froze on. Yeah. Are you still with me? I'm, I'm there. You're breaking up once in a while, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That Okay, it's my phone then. Think about Jean. Jean Irwin. Dr. Jean. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, that name rings a bell. Gotcha. Okay. Right. The reason I pointed out that particular alum, uh, Henry Strauss, is uh, I think he's, I want to say class of 62, okay. or maybe he's earlier than that, but we recently had this library that I'm looking at now named oh, wow. after him. And so this is right, up, this is right across the corridor uh, from where the school is at. Oh, okay. And here's a view of the school itself from the outside. It is four floors uh, with a rooftop that is basically housing most of our engineering quality um, materials that we use to keep the uh, building functioning. The building is known as a Leeds building, so it's considered energy efficient. And so oh. most of that happens on the rooftop up here. Uh, you'll notice that the building is made of a lot of glass. There's this really nice glass atrium area. Uh, and on the second floor is a nice break room. We call it the tea room. I'll get a chance to see, um, show it to you live. And then the top floor is a lounge area for uh, where we do events, but it's also a lounge area for staff, faculty, and students, our alumni as well. And that's named after another alumnus too. Um, Ed Scaff. Does that name ring a bell? I've heard that name, yes. I can't repeat it. it was a year or two before or after me, but yeah, I remember that name. Okay, yeah. So we'll uh, see that a little bit more. Um, over this way, it's a beautiful sunny day here. These are the grassy knoll grounds just outside of the building. And usually we will use this for our commencement ceremonies. Oh, and okay. you, yeah. Uh, and you see that building that's straight ahead? Yes. That is the original building that was part of this campus. It's called the Fitzsimmons Building. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it is, the, it is the original Fitzsimmons Hospital that existed. I lived in Denver for about a year right after I graduated. And do you re I remember that building? Yes. <laughs> Can you, see, can you hear me now? Um, yes.
Let me see if I can adjust something here. There you go. Maybe it doesn't like all that sunshine. You can hear me now? Yes. You're, you're able to hear me now? I hear you and I see you. Okay, Ho hold on. I'm going to go back in the building and I okay. think my reception will be much better okay. once I get on the inside. Uh, do you see this? Oh, yes. This, this is one of the original art pieces for uh, the building. It's called the Ark of Cosmos and Damien, named after the patron saints of pharmacy. And oh. Uh, we are using this kind of as our school mascot, so our alumni awards and a number of other things are also uh, part of, um, well, we'll use this piece as its art center. All right, I think you find when I get back in the building um, that we're going to have better reception, so bear with me. Are you able to hear me now, Margaret? Yes. Actually, I'm going to correct you on my name. It's Marguerite. Marguerite. Yes. Wow. That's, that's, okay. that's, that's much more sophisticated. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get called the other one a lot, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Marguerite, where did I leave off? Did I um, tell you that I was uh, recording this, just my yeah. portion, so yes. I could uh, make this available for other virtual tours? Okay, yes. great. Wonderful. So I am right now in the lobby of the school. This is the very first floor of the school. I'm going to turn it around so you can see. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, this is a, a, a very colorful uh, piece of art that existed over on the Ninth Avenue campus when we were over on Colorado Boulevard. Okay. And it, and it came with us when we moved to the new building. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we've been in the new building now since 2000. 2011, so oh 10 goodness. years. 10 years, wow. <laughs> 10 years, it's our 10th uh, year anniversary, and it also happens to be the school's 110th year. Yeah, that's amazing. For, <laughs> yeah, so this is, a, it's a very beautiful open atrium area, it has this dramatic staircase, it's right here, and we found creative ways to hold events here as well. Just off to the side of this staircase, is a seminar room and I'm just going to peek in here and see if uh, anyone's in. If, if not, I'll go in. Hey, oh. we, we got the room. We got the room all to ourselves. So you can look at this as a microcosm of the lecture rooms that exist on campus, but this is a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. This particular seminar room can occupy up to about 80 people, okay. but most of the larger lecture halls that are on campus. And I don't think we'll get a chance to see one of those, unfortunately, because there are, the buildings are a little bit spread out. But those lecture halls can house anywhere from 200 to up to 600, maybe even 800 oh individuals. <laughs> yeah, so I can't imagine having a classroom full of 800 okay. students. That would, just, that would just be overwhelming to me. <laughs> All right, and so, from the lobby, there are several offices that help us run the school. First and foremost is the Office of Student Services. And I'm going to put my mask on, Mar Marguerite, because we have these guidelines. Oh, yeah. Hi, Leslie. I'm this is, is basically the, the main vein for the school as far as our uh, connection to the students. And so we, down this particular corridor, starts off with the Office of Student Services. Uh, we'll have the Associate Dean of Student Services who's here as well. Hey, I wanna wave to the camera, um, Dr. Hemstreet. It's our alum, uh, one of our alumni, Marguerite Moore. And uh, she is from Oregon, so she couldn't make it. So we thought we'd do a virtual tour for her. That's fine. Great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. And then further down the hall, we have the Department of Distance Degrees and Programs. And they generally deal with our PharmD program for what used to be termed as non-traditional students. 
but in essence, these are individuals who are uh, uh, in Canada and outside of North America. Oh, they, okay. pra they practice pharmacy already, but they don't have their doctorate in pharmacy. So they essentially are coming back to school to get their doctorate in pharmacy. They have some international programs as well. They have a wall here that kind of reflects that, all the different countries where they have, where we have students. And if I were to say there was an artery for the school, as far as our connection to the students, it would have to be this department that I'm coming to see now. It's the Office of Experiential Programs. And uh, I actually used to work in this office for about eight years. Uh, and they're having a busy conversation here now, but I want to interrupt them just for a bit. Dr. Killam. Sorry to interrupt. I wondered if I wonder if you wave to uh, Marguerite Moore in Oregon. We're doing a virtual tour of it with her. Hi. Oh, that's right. Well, I wish she's alumni. We're in Oregon. Yeah, Marguerite. Where in Oregon are you? Uh, Salem, Oregon. Actually, Kaiser, but it's a suburb of Salem. It's uh, Kaiser, a suburb of Salem. So, tell her I grew up in St. Helens. Okay. Mar did, did you hear that, Marguerite? Something about St. Mount St. Helens. Yep, or she grew, Helens. Up and grew up in oh, St. Helens. St. Helens, Oregon. <laughs> sure, yes. Okay. Yes. Here, I got to turn it around so you can see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it around so she can see. Hi, Marguerite. Hi. My, my old boyfriend is in, or was and still is in Salem. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do? He is an optometrist. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't know if he has his own practice or if he, he used to work with Costco, I think, but I think he might have his own practice now, but yeah, small world. It is. <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you. I'll let you guys continue, but thanks Thank for letting me jump in. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. And Dr. Dana Hammer is um, uh, working um, remotely from, from Seattle, and she basically oversees our co-curricular activities for the students. And also we have a new mentor uh, program that aligns the current students with our alumni and our, our preceptors to mentor them. Uh, oh, well, well, and uh, she pointed out to me that we also accept virtual mentors as well. So Marguerite, we may <laughs> possibly put a call in to you for something like this. Okay. Uh, I wanted to turn my camera around because um, I, I just wanted to point out that the gentleman in front of me here this is our current vice president for the Alumni Association, Dr. Brian Killam. And he's having a busy conversation. So I'm just going to leave them now because they're busy discussing important work. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so Marguerite, I'm, I'm now back in the main hall for the first floor. Um, this basically connects a number of different apartments. I wanted to focus on this here. This is always a popular section of the building. I refer to it as our Hall of Fame. It's oh, basically yeah. all our graduates. Um, and yeah. it starts with the year 1962, goes okay. on up to the current year. For some reason, we lost the other years. I think they're up in Boulder somewhere. Hopefully, oh, we'll get a chance to yeah. uh, do that. But I'm just going to walk down this stretch uh, and let you just see you know, some of... Uh, composites that exist because what year did you graduate Margaret? 1960 so I'm, I'm oh darn it yeah you just it's missed your years. composite oh boy we're gonna have to track that down you know I, I, I know we have it somewhere I have a good friend that graduated in the early 90s and I can't remember what year he's out here in Oregon now oh really okay went well to here Colorado, so here we are in the 90s right now as a matter of fact but you don't know specifically what year in the 1990s? No, I want to say 94, 95, maybe. 94. Not, here's okay. here's 94. Now, you, now you're going to ask me his name, and it just slipped my mind. I was going to say it, and it just slipped my mind. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can, like, see pictures and names that, that, that well here, but this is, this is the composite for 94. Okay. And uh, are you able to see the pictures okay? Yeah, exactly. They're kind of blurry to me. So. Yeah. All right. It's hard to see the names, but that's a yeah, right. class. Yeah, right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, you can see that they definitely got much larger as the years progress. Mm -hmm. um, possibly at this point, we were do, um, graduating about 130 students um, a year. 
or maybe this is more like 80 in this case, but what you're going to see is by the time, um, and this is a transition point because at that point we were still issuing the bachelor's degree in pharmacy, okay. Okay. but between 1999 and 2000, that's when we transitioned to the doctorate program. Okay, I was wondering. And yes, and you, you'll see that it started out in this transition with some smaller classes. This is definitely a, um, unusual um, uh, for this particular time period. Um, there were two classes in 2001 that graduated at different points during the year as we uh, went through this transition. And then we have a smaller class that's here. But by the time 2005 and 2006 occurred, you would see you know, a okay. gradual increase in the number of students. So by the time I started working in like 2008, this class right here, mm -hmm. we had um, 130 or so students. Wow. Uh, but then one year we in, uh, shot up to about 160. That was amazing. So. So the doctor program has been in about 20 years. Exactly. Oh, you know, I'm glad you pointed that out. We might have to celebrate that milestone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to the hallway that's here. Uh, what's generally on this floor as well. This uh, and the other support is on this side of the building. We have faculty offices and I'll walk you through that is the structure of the building in essence sort of mimics uh, what's going on as far as the structure of the campus itself. And what I mean by that is you're going to um, find out when we get to the other floors, research has a tendency to be on the west side of the building and anything related to education happens to be on the east side of the building. And that's the way the campus is structured too. Most education buildings are on the east side. Most research buildings are on the west side. So we are in essence going over to the west side right now, not to research yet, but these are our faculty offices that exist. So I just wanted to run this way uh, with you. And we have uh, 80 or so faculty members uh, that line not only the first floor, but third and fourth floors. We also have this uh, group that we partner with. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. This is the Colorado Consortium for Prescription Drug and Abuse Prevention. And this is uh, held, um, um, coordinated by one of our alumni, also one of our faculty uh, members, Dr. Rob Valick. And he has this wonderful team of individuals here who help him guide this work. They do a lot of community work focus on prescription abuse. Um, we've had some drug take back activities that uh, they've uh, since taken over. Uh, that used to be done through my department, the Marketing Communications Office, but it felt like it was more of a fit to have the consort. So we've um, since uh, transitioned that over to them and uh, because of COVID, we weren't able to do it, but. The hope is pretty soon we'll get a chance to do that. I'm gonna to walk to the end of the hall here because there are basically two main departments that run the show for the school. The first is the Department of Clinical Pharmacy. Oh, they locked me out. I don't think my key will work. I'm gonna try this to see. If I can use my key to get in here, Marguerite, this is gonna be a big reveal. Nope, my key doesn't work. See, I'm not as important as I thought. Yeah, watch it out. <laughs> That's all right, because I have another way of getting to where I need to be. This um, building is kind of convoluted as far as the hallway structure. And so if you really know the building, you can sneak oh, there you back up. <laughs> even noticing because there's so many different corridors. Uh, I guess that also means that you can easily get lost. But sure. this, this is the entrance for the Department of Clinical Pharmacy. Dr. Doug Fish is the department chair. He has some help here 
to um, guide the residency program. And so we have a number of residents who operate out of this office right here. They're busy in the hospitals right now. So otherwise I'd have you say hello to them, uh, but who helps Dr. Fish guide that particular program, the residency program uh, is Dr. Joe Sassine and Professor um, Randy Knudsen. And uh, it looks as though they're out too, probably in, in class at this point. So what I'm gonna do now is go up to the second floor and I'm gonna show you some of the research area that exists as well. We have three floors of research. One of those floors we actually share with the School of Medicine because we always wanna show that we're good partners with them. Um, and so they have a number of labs that are on the third floor. I'm specifically going to show you the research area on the second floor. And again, remembering that structure where research is on the west side of the building or the west side of campus, uh, education is on the east side of, of campus. This is the same structure that mimics that. This is the second department that I mentioned to you. Let me just flip this around so you can see. It's the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And right now the chair for that department is uh, Dr. David Ross, uh, but he will be stepping down from that position uh, in, in a while. And so we're in another transition where we're, we'll be looking to identify our new chair. Uh, the interim at this, at this point will probably be Dr. David Bain, but we have a number of researchers who are located down this hall. And you're going to see some um, in interesting viewing rooms that are right here. I wanna to get to one that's lit. But uh, these are basically lab rooms um, that really deal with a lot of hazardous materials. You'll get a chance to see it once I walk on the other side. Here's a more well lit one. Oh you can see some of the things that are going on in there. I'm sure some of this equipment looks familiar to you. You can see on the floor, there are all these vials of hazardous <laughs> materials just oh waiting to be meticulously handled. So we'll get a chance to see the other side of that once we go into the research area itself. Where I'm at now is basically the hallway where most of the faculty and researchers have their offices. Uh, one particular person to point out here is Dr. David Kroll. He's one of our newest faculty members and he's helping guide um, the new master's program that's been established for uh, uh, students who want to focus on research. And then there's a PhD program for research as well. Oh, here's, a, uh, here's something I wanted to point out. When I uh, took you outside, I showed you the atrium area. Oh. Can you see that now? Yes. All right. So see that teacup that's at the top here? Oh, yes. So that's how we ended up naming this the tea room. We had a faculty member who used to be my boss, um, Dr. Christopher Turner, uh, an Englishman, and he oh. loved his tea. Yes. And <laughs> so we decided to name it uh, in honor of him and call it the tea room. <laughs> <laughs> But it has a very nice view oh, of the corridor, um, the corridor just outside, um, that nice field that I told you about where we do the commencement ceremony. Uh, you can see that there. And if you look over to the left, those buildings there just on the east side of the Fitzsimmons building, those are the education buildings that I was telling you about. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is just a very nice area where we go to relax and unwind and enjoy some incredible views of the campus. And I'm going to walk down the corridor and take you to one of the newest uh, labs that has been established by the School of Pharmacy. You probably heard some news on this uh, because it's a very important addition to the in innovative work that the school is doing. It's called the Center 
for drug discovery. Had you heard about this? No, I don't think so. Okay, all right. Don't think I'll be able. Yeah. Oh, good to see. Is Dan LaBarbera. He basically heads the uh, Center for Drug Discovery. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, I can I can open the door so you guys can see it. Oh, that would be wonderful. Let me turn it around so you can see Marguerite, uh, giving a little summary of what the Center for Drug Discovery is all about. Sure. Uh, okay. So what you're see what you're seeing here is. So what it does is you come around here. Okay, let me turn the light on. Are you able to hear me? The automation platform uses a, a robotic yeah. arm that's on a track system. And it integrates um, automation with all of the different uh, high throughput and high throughput imaging for discovery instrumentation. And so the other thing is it's fully enclosed and it's HEPA filtered to um, help with sterile conditions. And so the robotic arm can move plates around and basically do high throughput drug discovery of hundreds of thousands of uh, potential drug compounds, oh, wow. biologics, or even cell therapies um, to look for the next generation of uh, lead drug therapies. So our goal at the center is to harness the diverse disease models being developed by researchers on our campus and throughout Colorado and to turn those into models for drug discovery so that we can identify the next lead compounds with potential for clinical translation. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. LaBarbera. Yeah, I appreciate that. Night, Amazing. <laughs> and now, if you were to put a price tag on this baby, what would you say we, we came in at with this? Uh, so the whole thing is roughly $3 million. That is quite the yeah. money. And if you include the live renovation, it's about $3.2 million. Did you hear that, Marguerite? $3 million, basically, wow. for this, this equipment to do some amazing work. So yeah. thank you for doing that. I'm going to go out this way so sure. I can show them down the lab okay. here. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye. Jen, I'm getting a message on my screen. It says, oops. There are others who are doing some incredible work here. I am now in the research hallway for, um, for the second floor. And... We have a number of other labs that are situated here. Uh, we are getting into a lot of uh, nano, uh, I'm trying to use this term correctly, Marguerite, uh, nanomedicine, where they're looking at nanoparticles to isolate and look for certain um, cel cellular, cellular work that they're doing. And a lot of that work is housed in these high tech refrigerators. Um, and they can get as low as 80, to, um, 80. The temperature. And um, they had to set up specific alerts for individuals to receive if the temperature fell be below a certain um, uh, temperature. But now that they have these high-tech refrigerators that's all done by computer, it makes the uh, maintenance of uh, some research materials and the preservation of those uh, research much better and much easier to do. I'm going to try and see if I can go into one of the lab areas just to walk through. And I'm not going to talk at this point because they're very busy. So I'll just walk through.
All right, I'll talk now because we have to be very quiet when we're in the actual lab space it, itself. They're very kind, but uh, we do our best not to disturb them because they're so busy. But I just wanted to give you a little view of what the actual labs look like before we went out to the refrigerated area here. You'll also see what uh, they have here because we're dealing with hazardous materials is um, they have these high tech showers that will basically help um, um, deal with contamination if you are exposed to any hazardous materials. And they have any number of those. Um, what I didn't point out that I'll point out now is they also have what are referred to as a bunch of cold rooms. Let me turn this around. I talked about the refrigerators, but they also have these cold rooms that are here too. Um, now they're supposed to use for practical purposes for housing materials that are uh, 40 degrees, um, 40 degrees and below, uh, zero to 40 degrees that is. But Marguerite, when the summer comes and it's really hot outside, I kid you not, sometimes we come to this cold room so we can cool off a little bit. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> Probably feels good. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, here's uh, basically our um, cleaning area where we, and we have a sterilization machine here for all that. Uh, there's some high tech centrifuge machines some type of a distillery machine that's here as well. All part of the different labs that exist. And I believe this is another uh, one as well. I forget which uh, lab this is a part of, but um, a, a device to basically keep um, the, the research material um, stirred and uh, properly diluted. Um, this is one of those rooms that we saw on the outside. Okay. So I showed you the viewing window, but this is the actual entry into one of these rooms itself. Again, where they're uh, dealing with some um, and then that will take us through the second floor to the other end of side where again we will see the office for the department of pharmaceutical sciences now there are a couple of displays that we decided to add to uh, the office as well here's one that was a donation from um, a particular donor uh, who is this james mcdowell uh, and so his family decided to donate all of uh, his pharmacist materials uh, in honor of, of, of him. He uh, received a bachelor's uh, with us, uh, but then also was a pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical chemist. And oh, I forgot, he's one of our distinguished Coloradans. That's one of the highest awards for the school too. So uh, I need to pay closer attention to this display because there's a lot of goodies in here. That's just one of the displays that you'll see um, as we go through this. I want to take you up to the fourth floor where of those displays, but I wanted to go down this particular hallway again so I could go to uh, that staircase that I told you about. Remember I said there was this dramatic staircase oh, uh -huh. that kind of winds the floor. So I wanted to for me because the other staircases, when I go up them, I get a little winded. In the winding staircase, I can take my time. So um, by that staircase, you're going to see another display that we usually have on each floor where we try to you know, show the history of pharmacy as far as oh, what medicine, what, what pharmaceuticals look like uh, and at any given period of time. These have all been donated by various donors. Would you, like some, would you like some more? Because I have a collection. That I Do love. you really? Yes, old time pharmaceuticals and some bottles. Oh, wow. 
Well, you know, I did get word from the dean where they uh, decided to maybe not get um, collect any more donations okay. because they have so many. I'm sure. But that's good to know because you never know when the dean would decide, oh, I, we, we want to make sure that we get something from that particular okay. individual. And I know he always talks you up. So does Jonathan. So I'm like, you know, hey, <laughs> donate. We should take it off our hands. <laughs> Especially when I start to downsize and get rid of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Are you almost near that point where you're thinking about downsizing? Well, we're thinking about it in a couple of years, yes, because we're both in our mid-80s, so. Um, are, are you thinking about staying in Oregon? Probably, yes, because I have children and grandchildren here, so. So our last stop is going to be the fourth floor, and on the fourth floor are another research area, faculty offices, but the main department up there is the dean's office. And also that room that I talked to you about on, um, for Edward Scaff and Karen Scaff, uh, the reception room. So I'll take you in there and see what that, show you what. The other, oh, this is kind of nice. This is a nice view. I forgot this is here. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. So the campus oh, yeah. has, has really grown by leaps and bounds. And with it, so has the residential community around the school as well. So just in that area there, those are some new residential buildings that have come up. That's some nice restaurants there, coffee shop. Hmm. There's um. There's a brewery as well. It's become like a little town and a lot of staff live over there. So do a lot of students. And it just makes it easier for them to be able to access the campus because it's just across the street. I think Jonathan lives in that area somewhere because he tells me he just walks to work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, you're right. I forgot all about that. And room that I told you about. Hmm. It's a little disorganized right now, but in essence, this becomes um, a presentation room. So oh. the dean will often do times some small group meetings or seminars take place in here. A number of committees use this space to meet. Uh, I have found when the commencement ceremony takes place, it's probably one of the best places to go to view oh, yeah. that commencement ceremony because you can see right on the grounds there yeah That's and cool. also and also have the benefit of air condition <laughs> yeah because <laughs> uh -huh. it gets really hot in may but yeah another incredible view of uh the library um, this is probably an even better view of the education area that i told you about that's on the east side of campus and uh once we get to the close i'll take you to the other side of the building and I'll show you the research building because because there's a new building that's uh, been that's come up and it's supposed to open uh, by the time the year ends and it's 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 pretty spectacular as a Death Star maybe that's not a very kind way to describe it it's just a beautiful building so I'll be sure to show that to you as well to the main hallway, the fourth floor, the fourth floor, and our last stopping point will be the Dean's Suite. And I wish the Dean were, was here today. Um, I got four, and he's planning to attend the tailgate as well, but he uh, couldn't make it to the office today. Otherwise, I know he would have loved to have uh, spoken to you for a little bit. But Jonathan's office is up this way too, and I'll uh, drop by and see if he's uh, in. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm doing a virtual tour for an alum, Marguerite Moore. So, so Marguerite, I wanted to just point this out. This is the oh, yeah. uh, Dean Suite, and these are all our deans. And I imagine the Dean that you're going to mention that you remember most and foremost could either be this gentleman right here, does he look uh, familiar? Errol Hines. He was yeah, our yeah. actually before Dean, he was our pharmacology instructor. Oh wow, wow. Everyone always mentions him when um, um the deans come up. But was this gentleman your dean? Yes. When you were at school? 
Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Wonderful. And yeah, so this is our wall of beans. And as I uh, had said to you, there are a number of different artifacts and other displays that people donated. This is one particular pop popular one. I think it's a distillery of some nature. Looks like it, yes. I think this is a old-fashioned old scale mm -hmm. that existed. We found out a couple of years back that we had a pharmacist who is an artist. Uh, this gentleman right here, uh, Richard Anyafrak. And so um, there was a magazine, the Journal of Pharmacy, where he was responsible for all the art. Oh my and goodness. these are all, these are all his compositions. Very artistic. What year did he graduate? Because that name is familiar. Or maybe I just remember it from the journal. Well, me, I'm going to see if it says it in his uh, biography uh, here. I'm not seeing a year, okay. but I'll look that up and, and see. Yeah, but yeah, all beautiful pieces. So this is a, a, a great donation to ever see. And then on the other side, there's a huge old fashioned display oh, that was uh, brought. Yes. Wow. Amazing, amazing things here. And, you know, of course, because of, you know, the hazardous materials that pharmacists were in contact with back then, uh, before this could even be donated, this had to be run through the Environmental Protection Agency to make sure that there were certain things that were not housed within the building. Oh mercury, oh. mercury was first and uh, foremost, Isn't the one that we had to watch out for. So apparently uh, pharmacists dealt with a lot of mercury. I think so, yeah, <laughs> the early days. Right, so this is all um, donated by the Reinhold Pharmacy apparently. I don't know what their connection is to the school, but uh, hmm. I think at one point they were considered one of the largest pharmacies. Uh, in, in, in the world or in the, in, in the United States itself. Okay. Yeah. Then the Dean's office is right here. In this corner, he gets a nice view of the mountains. Oh, I bet. Uh, yeah, he does. Jonathan's office is right here. And I think he's been working remotely from home primarily. I think so, yeah. There's a nice conference room that's just off from the dean's suite that he can use for his meetings. But we use this uh, room from time to time too, depending on how small those meetings are. Uh, but some pretty high tech things for people to do their virtual meetings. So it's a great space uh, for us. It's actually amazing for me to see it because I remember when, before the school was built, we were operating out of the uh, academic office one building and we were all on the first floor we had our researchers in one of the research buildings just across uh, the way and the building was you know nothing short of a miracle but the fact that we were able to accomplish that work for so long until this building was fully constructed that it of itself. So I'm really glad we were all able to come together. Yeah. So I want to um, take you outside again uh, because I promised to show you the research quad area um, and that one new building that's come up. I believe it is research three because the, not the, the buildings on campus are named in a certain way. So the building that is immediately east of the Fitzsimmons building is Education One. And it's so that the basically the nucleus of the campus, it's the center. Distance that the building is from the Fitzsimmons building. So the same thing happens on the west side where Research One is immediately west of the Fitzsimmons building, and then Research Two is the second building over on the west side. The new building that I'm uh, mentioning, I thought they were going to call it Research Three. Name it, 
the Health Sciences Building, the CU Anschutz Health Sciences Building. The intent over there is to uh, provide space for all the schools to be able to do some clinical research, some pharmaceutical research. Um, they want to focus on things like mental health. Uh, they also want to um, basically provide, uh, uh, well, well, how, how can I say it, a more, a more complete experience around uh, health sciences. Oh, yeah. And so there are a number of different projects that will be taking place out of that building. They actually even set aside some space for the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. And that is, um, oh, it's, 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 I think they're terming it as the uh, innovative, an innovative pharmacy. Innovative collection. I have to uh, follow up on that. That is research too. And then can you see the building that's just behind yeah. research too? That is the new building that's come up that's called Health Sciences One. So um, this probably doesn't do it justice. You have to be really up close to see it, but they're still under construction. Uh, but pre we're hoping uh, by the end of this year, it will be open and occupied and that we'll be able to tour it. So I'll uh, keep you posted on okay. uh, that. So I did, did I mention the hospitals that are on campus? I mean, I mentioned the Fitzsimmons Hospital, which is not, no longer functioning as a medical building outside of the fact that the School of Medicine operates out of it. Um, mm -hmm. But we have the University Hospital, UC, um, UC Health, that's just behind the research buildings here. And then over in this section of the campus, past the education buildings, is the new VA hospital. Oh, okay. It is, it's gargantuan. Um, when you go in, um, you almost feel as though you're in a large airport because it, it's just that big. It, it looks like a complete, um, just mile long terminal. <laughs> oh my word. Once you go in, yes. The last hospital that's on campus here, that's in this section, just on the other side of the Fitzsimmons building is Children's Hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have three hospitals that we collaborate with in order to offer experiences to the students to get through their experiential hours, provide them the experience that they need to work in hospital settings. And then of course, for those who are interested in community pharmacy, uh, we collaborate with um, the independent pharmacies, Rx Plus, uh, Rite Aid, Walmart, Walgreens, and a number of others where um, to uh, make sure that we give the students the retail pharmacy experience oh, yeah. uh, that they're, they're looking for. So that's it in, in a nutshell, uh, really. Oh, thank you. Yes. Are, there, are there any questions that maybe you had about anything, something you was really curious about? <laughs> well, I was trying to remember, I was, my husband and I were in Denver about two years, before COVID hit two years ago. And Travis and Johnson took us about around some of the hospital. They took us through Fitzsimmons. And I can't remember that we, that we went through the research building. We might have, but I don't remember that. So that was a good, good tour. So I appreciate that. Steve, are you able to hear me, Marguerite? Sorry, I think I lost you outside there a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's the other thing that's, uh, we, that's kind of problematic with the campus is cellular service is pretty spotty, depending on who you uh, have your who's your service provider i'm with t-mobile so you oh. know maybe i need to switch <laughs> <laughs> well i was looking at your graduate wall there is that the graduate wall behind you oh yes yes let me turn turn it around so you can just see it without me in the picture yes this is the most recent graduating class okay. and they're going to go down as one of the more unique composites because what they told them to do is you know, normally there's a photographer that's assigned to take everyone's picture, but because of COVID, oh, yeah. they couldn't do that. So what they asked the students to do is provide their own shot. And so you will see a great deal of variety in oh, how yeah. people took their pictures, um, different backgrounds. Maybe some did hire a professional photographer. I think in some cases, people did selfies. Um, <laughs> 
So it's, it, it's, it's going to be stand out as one of the more unique composites uh, for uh, this, for the class, that's for sure. Well, the young man I was thinking of was Jerry Fairbanks, and I couldn't remember his name earlier. Back in the Jerry Fair, from the 90s? Okay, yeah. all right, all right, wonderful. Are you still in contact with him? No, I've lost contact with him. He was working here in Salem for a while at our mental health uh, clinic pharmacy. But then mm -hmm. I think somebody said he moved to Portland. So I've lost contact with him again. And I don't know if the Alumni Association keeps in touch with him or not. I don't know. Yeah, I can't say that I've heard from him uh, directly, but you never know. Um, you know, at any given point, there's an alumni who will reach out or will finally make contact and uh -huh. say, you know, it's been a while. And um, I'd like to connect or reconnect. And uh, we do our best to try and uh, tag with their uh, classmates. So who knows? He, yeah. <laughs> he may be one who wants to come out soon. So <laughs> well, another tidbit of history regarding my father, who was a pharmacist. There was a, he graduated from university two or three years past me, Alan Chapman. Now, have you heard that name or not? No, no. But he worked, he worked for my father in Lamar, Colorado before he went to pharmacy school. And then I think he was at the university hospital for a few years after graduation, but mm -hmm. I lost contact with him too. And whether he's still around or not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting. I didn't realize that you had that connection to the smaller communities in Colorado, because mm -hmm. you know, the school really always wants to focus on the rural communities. They have what they refer to as a rural commitment. And that's why people like Dr. Uh, Lucas Smith um, it, it's so important because oh, yes. it, it, we, it, it was just amazing to see him really commit to the whole concept of making sure that rural communities receive the care, the oh. best care possible oh, in, the, yeah. in the realm of pharmacy. So, Do you, you, evidently you probably communicate with him. I was going to look through some of my old pictures to see if I had any pictures of that pharmacy in Salida in the 20s when my father was living there. <sighs> I don't know oh. that I do, but if I did, maybe I could get those to him. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I bet he could display those on uh, in the ground somewhere. Well, when we were chatting yesterday, I told him that my father had worked at what was called Wagner's Pharmacy way back then in Salida. And mm -hmm. he said they've got a plaque on the wall in their pharmacy related to that, that drugstore. And I don't know if they're in the same building of that one way back when or not, I don't know, but I'll let you know and see if, see if I find anything, I'll let you know. That would be an interesting comparison, if it, especially if it's in the same building. Oh, yeah. To see what the building looked like then and what it looks like now. Uh, that would be great uh, or wonderful. The other thing All is right. I'm going to let you know, um, when I talked with Travis and Jonathan several times, I did donate several of my father's pharmacy books, and I think they're over at the medical school uh, museum. Is there a kind of a museum over there? Well, pharmacy? not that I know of, but what I'm wondering is the Henry Strauss Library that I pointed okay, out. Yes, yes. Okay. That's where they're at. Yes. Yeah, they have a large collection of medical related books over okay. there. Okay, yeah, that's where I think they were going to be. In fact, I took them out to Colorado when we were there two years ago and donated mm -hmm. them to the library at that time. Oh, nice. So, that means they probably put a play card up there of some nature to maybe show that they were donated by you. I have mm -hmm. to go over there and see, see if your name is posted oh. anywhere. <laughs> I, I think Jonathan mentioned they did something, and I can't remember. He might have said a picture, and I just can't remember for sure or not. But okay, anyway. all right. So. Well, that would be worth checking out. It's been a while since I've been over to that collection, but it is quite the collection of books. Oh, it's good. great. Yeah, it looked like yeah. when we were there that they did. So I was glad, glad to find a good home for those books. Oh, God, I'm glad to hear that. Wonderful. All right. Well, Marguerite, I'm so glad you uh, took some time out to uh, do this tour. This is my first virtual tour, and this was okay. a lot of fun. Well, you did great. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your day, too. I You're very it. welcome. We're, we're, we're sorry you can't be here, but we'll be thinking about you when we uh, have the game tomorrow. Oh, okay. you, know yeah. we're, you, you know we're playing the Oregon um, oh, State the or Beavers. Yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell anybody in Oregon, but I'm going to root for Colorado. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You I've wouldn't have a, it any other way. Yeah, I've got a son-in-law that is a great Beaver fan, so we can't be in the same room when the two teams play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure, Marguerite. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so Gary. much. We'll see you I'll next talk time. to you later. Okay, bye-bye.